Let us remain standing just a moment for prayer as we bow our heads. Almighty God, the creator of heavens and earth and the author of everlasting life and the giver of every good and perfect gift, to thee, O Lord, who raised up Jesus, thy Son, on the third day, for our consolation that we might be reconciled to thee, being justified by faith, believing the story, we pray that you will raise us tonight, Lord, your children, to a higher heights and a deeper depths of thy eternal presence. May we recognize thee, Lord, and may new faith come tonight, something that will just set our souls to burning with old-fashioned Pentecostal fire. Remember those, Lord, tonight who are weak and feeble knees and feeble hands. We pray that they will be strengthened tonight by the presence of thy Spirit. Bring those wandering ones back to the fold. And all of those, Lord, who has never yet accepted thee as their personal Savior, may this be the night that they'll settle it once for all. And then, Lord, remember those who are sick and afflicted, that so needy, may they have a resurrection tonight to new health, new hopes, new faith. Grant it, Lord. Speak to us through thy word as we further wait. In the name of Jesus, thy Son, we ask it. Amen. You may be seated. It's so good to come back to the house of the Lord each night. I do not know any place I would rather be tonight unless it would be in heaven with all the redeemed than to be standing with the people who are already redeemed and waiting for their Lord to come to receive them. So being that we are not there already, we are with those who are ready to go. So glad to be called one of them. I wish to read just a verse tonight out of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the 18th verse. While we look not at the things which are seen. And my subject tonight is looking at the unseen. We are told that we have an outward man and a inward man. And the outward man looks by his eyes, and the inward man walks by faith. So we have to be led by one of these two persons. Outside, outward man is self. Inward man is God. You see, we do not see with our eyes. Though many times we have thought that we see with our eyes, we only look with our eyes, we see with our heart. Jesus told Nicodemus once, 
Except a man be born of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And otherwise he meant this. You cannot understand the kingdom of God until you are born again. So you have to make an effort first to accept it. And then after you have accepted it, then you are able to understand it. I used to say as a little boy, it sounds almost sacrilegious to say it here at the platform, we used to play banner maker, going swimming out at the old swimming hole. And how many little boys that raised in the country is not acquainted with the old swimming hole? When we get a few minutes time from the worker after the pitching hay all day, we would rush out to the swimming hole and go swimming. And we used to have a big bank at this swimming hole where I, I would go in. And we had to have a banner maker. He had to lead the way. And he really had a job on his hands. So when all the boys would get close to the water, sometimes it would be a little late in the fall. And there were springs up at the head of this creek and the water got real cold sometimes. And we would take out running just as hard as we could. And the last one getting in the water had to be the banner maker. Well, I never was banner maker because I was usually the first one in. And the rest of them had to take the trouble of taking off a shirt or undoing some suspenders. But usually I just had a pair of overhauls on with a fodder twine across for a suspender and a nail for a button. I don't know whether you ever had that or not. And the only thing I had to do is just pull that nail and the overhaul stood in the air and I was in the water. <laughs> so. And then they kindly looked forward to me to give them a signal whether the water was cold or whether it was warm. Now, if I held up one finger, that meant the water was cold. Come in careful, boys. But if I held up two fingers, the water was warm. I was a witness. I'd already tested it. And now if there's any here tonight that perchance are not born again, just come on in. The water's fine. <laughs> already witness it. Some time ago, the critics used to say that God certainly made a mistake when he said, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But later they find out now that God was right. They said a man had no mental faculties in his heart. And it perhaps if God said that his heart, he meant his head. But God doesn't make any mistakes. When he said his heart, he meant his heart. Just like he does all of his other statements. They are perfect and they need no translations. They are just the way God said them. Not for another age or another time, but for whosoever will at all times. For God's word is perfect, everlasting, eternal, as he is eternal. So about four years ago, up in Chicago, I was reading a great headline in a paper where that the medical science had found a little compartment in the heart of a human being that did not even have a cell in it. It was not found 
in the animal life, it was only found in the human body, the human heart. And they said it must have been the dwelling place of the soul. So then man does think with his heart. You look with your eyes, but you understand with your heart. When God made man, he made him thus. For he made this little certain compartment in the man for his own throne, his control tower. God wants to lead man, but man wants to lead himself. Therefore, there is a war constantly the man wants to go after what he sees with his eye. That's where he's deceived. That's where Satan deceived Eve. But what she could see, the fruit was pleasant to the eye. But it was death to the soul. So is it tonight. God wants to lead man. So he made himself a little control tower in the midst of his heart so that man would be led by the Spirit of God. Getting off on his own leading is what separated him from his fellowship, looking what he could see with his eye. And that's where he stands yet tonight. All those who are led by such things. But the scripture says that sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. Your emotions is your control. And you can notice a man or a woman that tries to walk after the things of the world... They never can please God. But a man or a woman that will not look at the things of the world, but just go according to the leading of the Spirit, they're usually in the will of God. That is the great fight tonight. Satan tucked the eye, a man's head, to control him by his head. God took his heart. Man's always trying to achieve something by his head. He's supposed to achieve, but by his heart. That's the control tower where God controls him and directs his thoughts, directs his walks, directs his emotions. Sometimes... I get so happy, I just have to let it loose. And if I'd look around and see somebody, then see, I got my eyes on people then. But God help me to keep my eyes closed. I want to just be led by the Spirit of God. That the flesh will have nothing to do into it. Usually ministers, when they get into the pulpit, they begin to think, if I speak on a certain, certain thing, here is a certain member of my church that's a, a good pay in this church, they'll leave the church. And then you go to looking at the flesh again. Then God can't lead that minister. You've got to say what the Spirit says to say. Then we are led by the Spirit of God. And we find that this man is controlled by a control tower. And that tower makes him what he is. It moves him. It's his emotions. He lives by it. 
Now he likened us unto sheep. A sheep is totally lost without a leader. Now if you've ever raised sheep, you know how true that is. And if you ever went to a slaughterhouse, I think that's one of the most pitiful cases of animal life, to see the slaughter of sheep. The little fellow's just depending on something to lead them. And do you know what they take to lead the sheep into the slaughter? A goat. He leads the sheep right over into the slaughter pen, and he goes up the aisle with them. Then when it comes to the place to get killed, the goat jumps out, and the sheep goes right on to his slaughter. And that's about true with human life today. The devil will lead you right into the slaughter pen if he can. He'll lead you into confusion. He'll let you see something that looks pretty and looks like it might be so pleasant to the eye when the Holy Spirit is condemning it and saying not to believe it. So we should follow the leading of the Holy Spirit always. And you cannot follow the leading of the Spirit until the Spirit is in your heart to lead you. I just heard Brother Duffield make a statement about some saying this and some saying that. I was standing just in Mrs. McPherson's room there where she usually waited. I like to go in there and pray because I know it's a little chamber perhaps where she waited and others has waited. It's Paul Rader and great people who's preached in this temple before. Where they've waited on the Spirit to know what to say when they come out here. And sometimes your message is changed completely from what you were going to speak on. But God knows what He's doing as long as He's a leading. You see, you must always go by the Spirit, and the Spirit will always agree with the Word. Now, if the Spirit leads you contrary to the Word, then it's not the Spirit of God. Now, if the Holy Spirit is leading you, it'll say, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If it's a religious spirit or some other type of spirit that isn't the Spirit of God, it'll say, it was for a day gone by, not now. How could you make that act right? Because it said he is the same. Oh, I'm so glad to have the Holy Spirit. See, God seeing that beforehand, Jesus said, I'll not leave you comfortless. But I'll pray the Father and he'll send you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And he will abide with you forever. And when he comes, he will testify of me and will show you things to come. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Oh, how happy we are to see that Spirit of truth bearing record with his word. That it is the Spirit of truth. Then sons and daughters follow it. It'll stay right in the lids of the Bible and confirm every promise that God made. Sheep is lost, and so are we lost without a leader. We must be led. Animal life is led. I'm sure most all of you seen, I believe it was in Look magazine here some time ago. They were having an article on wild geese. How that every fall of the year, God has those geese to have a big get-together, a revival. And they come from every little swamp, coming together. How I've watched those fellas. I've 
first found God by watching nature and see that something led them. Little ducks that's born on the ponds up in Canada, never been off the pond, is born in spring of the year, just feathered out and become a, a, a duck on the pond. And he's satisfied, he gets plenty to eat, but just let this mountain snow cap. And the first cold breeze comes across that mountain, that little leader will get right out in the middle of the water, stick that little honker up in the air and honk four or five times and every duck on the pond will come right to him. He'll raise right off of that pond and go just as straight to Louisiana as he can go to the rice fields with no compass. Why is it? They call it instinct. I call it God. That's God's provided way for him. And it seems like when they're all in unity, they all fly together and go straight. But let them get disunified one time. Look magazine was telling about an old gander that raised up in the north some time ago and he got all off of the beam and many of the geese flew back and left him. But he kept calling to them and he was so far off until he flew all the way to England. Many of them perished in their going. And that's the way I do not mean this rational now. But I'm sure that many of our church leaders has got the church off like that. And now they say that every year those geese, when fall of the year comes, they swarm, get together. They're ready for the revival, but they don't know which way to go. They've been led so far off the track till they can't find their way back again. I think that's about the way it's got to date. To the church has become a social gathering instead of the leading of the Holy Ghost and the baptism back again. The people are so far away, they talking about revival in our days. Billy Graham mentions it so many times. And I'd like to see revival in our days. But there's been leaders who's taken the people this way and that way and this way and that way until they don't know which way to go. Oh, I pray that God will send such a spirit of conviction in the Holy Ghost till he'll come back to his leadership. And instead of our modern leaders of the day all over the world, we do not go by sight. Someone says, look at such and such a church and such and such a denomination. That has nothing to do with it. Not one thing to do with it. Although I respect those things and they're great and I appreciate them. And the thing that I pray for, uh, they will let down those bars in such a way that they'll not take man's leading no more and come back to the Holy Spirit. That instinct that's in a man that makes him know that God saves him from sin and sanctifies his soul with the power of the risen Christ and heals his sickness. The full gospel. Not just enough to be deceitful. Satan told Eve enough to be deceitful. He told her the truth, but not all the truth. Now, if God can come on the control tower, and when the, my sheep know my voice, well, now, if these, all these strange voices in the world of this social gospel that just belong to church and that's all that's necessary, why hasn't it done something? It's done nothing but confuse the people. What we need tonight is a unified church filled with the Holy Ghost and power from on high, led by the Spirit of the living God on the control tower.
that won't say, because I'm a Baptist and he's a Methodist, I'll have nothing to do with him. A real true spirit of God will recognize his brother or sister. I don't care what kind of a brand he's on. Oh, we need the leadership again of the Holy Spirit walking after the unseen, the way that God leads us. The things that we see are temporal. The things that we do not see are eternal. Some time ago, I was in Canada having a meeting, and I walked down the street, and there was a man selling televisions. And they was having a program on from over in the States. And there was a cowboy there strumming on a guitar. And this man said to me, I'd like to sell you this set, fella. I said, I'm just a tourist. Oh, he said, I see. And he said, um, you're just passing through? I said, no, I'm here in a service. Oh, he said, you wouldn't have to be around here at this Branham outfit. I said, yes, sir, I am. And he said, what do you think about that fellow? <laughs> well, there was nothing I could say at that time. I said, oh, I think the services are fine. I said, was you there last night? He said, yes, I was. And I said, what do you think about that man getting up off of that cop, that soldier that had called his name and told him who he was and how he'd been in affliction for years. Oh, he said, I don't think nothing about it because I'd have to see it proved. That hypnotism doesn't go with me. And you know, my old southern mammy had an expression, give the cow enough rope, it hangs itself. And uh, I said, uh, why do you, he said, anything that cannot be scientifically proven, then I think there's nothing to it. But I said, I don't like to be different, but I have to be now. The things that can be scientifically proven is not real. It's only the things that's not scientifically proven is real. Oh, he said, that's ridiculous. And I said, all right, I want to ask you something. Could you tell me what love is? Could you scientifically show me what love is? Go down to the drugstore and buy me a quarter's worth of love. I need some more. You can't see it. It's the unseen. Show me what life is. I need just a little more life. Could you go buy me a quarter's worth? Show me what life is, what love is, what personality is, what the Holy Spirit is, what God is. It's the unseen things that's real, lasting. These things are temporal and perishable, yet we put so much emphasis and so much concern about the natural thing and so little about the spiritual thing. Now I said, for instance, coming through this room right now is television pictures. And I said, you have to show me the picture. Oh, he said, of course, it hits the crystal and then it, and the tubes and so forth, and it shows the picture here. But I said, that man's in the United States. And I said, you're picking him up over here, coming through the air that you can't see. He said, but we can prove it. Because here's a picture showing that it's over there, and there's a sanding station to prove that it's here. I said, yes, and we can prove it too. For in glory, we've got a risen Savior who sends it forth and the Holy Ghost reveals it and makes it positive. Therefore, we've got a sending station and a receiving station. That's correct. God in heaven who knows all things can so put a gift in his church that he can magnify it and reflect himself to it and say things which is absolutely impossible to by scientists to prove. See, we don't walk by things we do not, we do see, we walk by things we do not see. Let's take a few men that did walk such, that looked at the unseen. 
Noah, for instance, before there was one drop of water that fell from the heavens, Noah seen the rain coming. There was never had been any rains from the heavens. The skies were always clear. There were no clouds. Never had been a cloud upon the earth. Why? Because it was God's program to water vegetation through the springs and things. But Noah, because that God said, it's going to rain. He saw the rain coming. 120 years before one drop fell and made preparations to get away from it. I'm so glad that by faith we can see afar the coming of the Lord Jesus and making preparations to get out of this old world that's going to be burned sometime with unquenchable fire. Oh, Noah, when God spoke and said, Noah, where are you, Lord? That makes no difference where I am. I am that I am. It's going to rain. And ever since he heard that word, there was something beating in his bosom. Like a pulsation. It's going to rain. It's going to rain and he could see the clouds coming. And he made preparations for it. If these people here in these wheelchairs and on these cots and you that's sick to die, if you could just hear the word of God tonight. Don't try to figure it out. Don't think how long you've been sitting, how long you've been sick. Think about what God said. And there comes a pulsation of the Holy Spirit in your heart saying, it's the truth. How do you know it's the truth, said the devil? I know it's the truth. It's God's word, it's the truth. Something begins to pulsate in your bosom that it is the truth. Then make ready, you're coming out of there. Just as certain as I stand in this pulpit tonight. Don't look at what you see, how bad I'm crippled, how sick I am, what the doctor said. Don't look at that. Look at the unseen, what God said. Before you feel any difference, before the pain leaves, before the hand moves, before the eye can see one sight, yet make ready for it's going to come. As long as that pulsation begins to rise in your bosom, in your heart, where God sits on the control tower. Now I get religious about this time. And I think that the Holy Spirit can lead man and tell him things and make him act different. And make him believe things and receive things that the world never could believe could happen. I'm a witness. I was a blind man once myself. Practically had to be led. So I know now what I'm talking about. That it's the Holy Spirit Oh, can't you feel that pulsation of the Spirit begin to rise in your heart? Saying, Jesus Christ is in our midst. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. Pulsations. Something moving like a heartbeat. It's pumping energy to your spirit. It's pumping energy to your mind. Then let the Things that your eyes see black out. That you see not the things of the world. You're believing what God said. Noah waited, believed, moved with fear, and built an ark. Though criticized. Why they told the old fellow must have been crazy. But yet, no clouds had ever come. Before there was a cloud... Before there was a a drop of water in the skies, Noah, with the unseen of the natural eye, with his spiritual eye, tuned to the Word of God, seen the rain falling. Oh, if we tonight, in this Angelus temple, could so tune our hearts, not our literal mind, let it go, cast down reasonings, but with our hearts could tune it to the Word of God, to see a revival break forth, to see the altars full, to see the church packed,
to see the revival spreading through Los Angeles, a fire that cannot be put out. Our hearts will begin to pulsate under the power of the Holy Ghost. There will be such prayer meetings over Los Angeles tonight. It have to happen. Certainly it would. When the church is in tune, what if the people here tonight that's sick will begin to think God is God if He isn't, why serve Him? If He's still God, He's still a healer. If He's Almighty God, He can do all things. And if He made a promise, He can't break it. He has to keep it. Then that pulsation begins to rise in your heart. Something's going to take place. There could be nothing stop it. It's a fire like a, a building on fire on a windy day. It just keeps blowing as the Holy Spirit fans that fire. And it keeps burning till it becomes a reality to you. Noah, Abraham, he heard the word of God speak to him one day. That there was a city whose builder and maker was God. He could not see the city, but he put his little pack on his back and took off to find that city. I believe he's enjoying it tonight. Sure, when God told Abraham what he did, that there was a city whose builder and maker was God, he packed up everything he had and started looking for that city. Twenty-five years later, after the promised son had been promised for twenty-five years, he received the son that through him opened the gate to that city for Abraham and all his children. Why? He couldn't see it. He wandered about in deserts and in the mountains and in the valleys and in all kinds of conditions, confessing that he was a pilgrim and a stranger. And he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. Ever born again child tonight comes through Abraham's blessing. Parts of promises given to Abraham and every child of God that receives the Holy Spirit, his pulsation is the same. I'm looking for a city. It isn't Los Angeles. It isn't New York. It isn't Louisville. It's heaven. And we confess that we are peculiar people, strangers. Because we're looking for something that we do not see, but something on the control tower says it's there. Every redemptive blessing between here and there, God promised to give it to us. And we're walking. We're pilgrims. I don't care what so-and-so says. I know something in me tells me it's real. I just start walking, looking, praising, confessing. Sure, because it's got to fall. The king of kings is the one who pronounced it. Moses, when he was in Egypt, there he had a choice to make. One day while he was the great general in the army, he looked out of the same window that Pharaoh did. Pharaoh seen the Israelites of nothing but a bunch of mud daubers. Just slaves, they were no good. All the Egyptians looked up on the same, but Moses couldn't see no beauty in them because they were ragged, they were poor, they were beaten. They were a rejected people by the world. And Moses standing with his foot on the throne. And yet by faith, looking at the unseen, Moses refused to be the son of Pharaoh because he knew he was the son of Abraham. I know you know I'm a fanatic. I'm fanatically about one thing that's Jesus Christ and His promises. Moses had rather be a son of Abraham than to be the son of Pharaoh. Why? He couldn't see it in the natural. If he's the son of Abraham, the mud pits was for him. The slaves whipped. What was it? But he had recompense to the reward. For he endured his seeing him who is invisible, who made the promise. There you are. What choice are you making tonight here in Hollywood and Los Angeles and the fashion place of the world? Where are the fine spires and the steeples and everything else? What choice are you making? 
Let me tell you, brother, sister, find that Holy Spirit that takes control in the heart and those pulsations begin to come that God is God and the things of the world will perish. Then you walk after the things you don't see. You'll become crazy to the people of the world. They'll say, well, that woman's lost her mind. That man's gone off at the deep end. Why, he says that he's healed of cancer. Why, he's healed of his blindness. He's healed of this, that, or the other. Or he says that he's received the Holy Spirit that's changed him. Why, he don't even associate in the pool room no more. We don't find him at the card table. This woman don't play the cards no more. She quit wearing uh, vulgar clothes. She become a new person. There's something wrong with her. Sure. Something happened to her. The old carnal mind died and the mind of Christ took the place in the woman's heart. And now she's walking, looking for a city where she'll be popular. Where she'll ride on the chariots with the sons and daughters of God. Where she'll be a, a guest of the Lord Jesus forever. She's looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. She cares not about the pollution of the world. See, she's been enthroned by something else. God has come into her heart and it just blackened out the fashions of the world. That's first. When he takes control, then I want you to notice that what Moses did when he got that vision of the unseen, here he was standing. There was a throne. All the world laid at his hand every pretty thing that could happen. The Pharaoh of Egypt. And he had all the money, the women's, the beautiful girls, and, and all the social and all the popularity and, and the gaiety of the world laid at his hand. But what did he look down in the mud pit? It could promise him nothing but poverty. A, a fall from the, the society that he was in. A turning his back upon the glo glaring things of the world. He had to go to the mud pits to become one of them. I remember some time ago when a certain denominational church that I was ordained in said, Billy, you go out with that bunch and you'll become a holy roller. But I looked out upon them. I seen a promise in them that they wasn't ashamed of the religion that they represented. I seen they were God's children called everything in the world. But I seen they were heirs of the promise and I took my place with them to become one of them. Now, I ain't to sympathize with them and say, oh, I think they're nice people that don't do no good. You've got to become one of them. Moses didn't say, no, I sympathize with my people. I think they're nice and everything, but I'm up here and they're down there. No, Moses went to become one of them. Because he endured to see in him who was invisible. He didn't walk by sight. He walked by faith, the unseen. Something happened to him. And notice, when it was weighed in the balance to a man, none of you had that kind of an opportunity tonight. But if you did, what choice would you make? There was the best the world could give. And here was the worst that religion could give. But yet the worst religion could give outweighed the best the world could give. So is it tonight to any man or woman that will forsake the things of the natural eye and the carnal mind and receive Christ into their heart. It will outweigh anything the world can give. For what can outweigh eternal life? There's nothing that can do it. I'm so happy that I've seen the balance. Certainly, look at Joshua. Look at Joshua. Before one rock ever come out of the building of the walls of Jericho, Joshua walked around the walls shouting the victory. For by faith he saw the victory. He knew the walls was coming down and he armed his man. And walked around and around and around Jericho for seven days in full armor. What doing? Because he was looking at the unseen. It was a promise God made. How 
how much can you walk around the wheelchair? How much can you walk around the cancer? How much can you walk around sin? Shouting the victory that God give the promise. When you can see Him who is invisible. When that pulsation comes into your heart. And begins to pulsate. I'm the Lord who heals all thy diseases. When you can see that. Everything else weakens away. Joshua he looked at the unseen and he walked around the walls. Believing it would happen. It all depends on what you're looking at. When they told Daniel the lines then ready for you. Daniel looking at the unseen. Know that there was an angel of fire who stood between him and the lines. That same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel later. For remember an animal is afraid of fire. When that pillar of fire stood between Daniel and the lions, the lions went off and meowed like kittens and laid down. By faith, the unseen, Daniel wasn't afraid of the lion. When the Hebrew children had to make a, a statement that they had denounced their religion, they had denounced their supernatural God and believed in a formal God. By faith, they saw that fourth man in the furnace. Sure they did. They said, our God is able to deliver us from this fire and furnace. What did they do? They seen but the unseen. They seen that fiery furnace before them and they seen the fourth man standing in it. Fanning the breezes away from them. Therefore they wasn't afraid of the fiery furnace. Any man or woman, if you're afraid what your mother will say, what dad will say, what the pastor will say, what so and so will say. You're still scared and walking at the things you see with your eye. But when you fade that back, what the pool room gang will say, what the movie gang will say, what the women you associate with will say, in the school they'll call you old-fashioned if you quit the rock and roll. What? You go to looking at that, you're in the flesh. But when God comes on the control tower, then you look at Him. And you're not afraid of the King's commands. Certainly not. I'm told that a snake can catch the eye of a bird. And he can get the direct hold on that bird. He can make that bird come right off of his roost. Flutter right around and around and around and come right straight to the snake's mouth. I'm told that the eye of a snake is so powerful that when he catches the eye of a bird, it charms him, lures him right into the snake. And they say that little bird will flutter and flutter and flutter coming down. And if it don't quickly start raising its head and shaking from that snake and start looking upward, it'll never free itself. That's the only way it can free itself. That's the way it is tonight with some of the little birds of this country. They've been lured by the things of the world, by a social gospel, by saying joining church is all necessary and the days of miracles is past. Until it's charmed them, the only thing you can do is flutter your wings and look upward quickly and see Jesus, not the things of the world. Don't look the things the world's alluring you to, big places and uh, societies and so forth, but look up and see Jesus. Flutter quickly and get out of it. Shake off the old dust off of you and ask for the old way. For in his life, I was told out here at Barstow Field, I believe what they call it, where they have these big jet planes, that a jet plane and its travel, it goes to a certain speed, and then it hits what's called the sound barrier. And they say that that plane struggles and shakes and struggles and shakes while it's trying to get through that sound barrier. It will seem like the wings will tear off of it. And the bolts will rip out of it while it's going through that sound barrier. But when once it gets beyond the sound barrier, then its speed's unlimited. It can just fly free. And the church and you sitting here tonight, oh, you're struggling and struggling and God's a pulling to you and showing you things. If you can ever get up past that sin barrier of unbelief, then unlimited revival will break out through the United States and everywhere. If you can go beyond that sound barrier, that sin barrier 
of unbelief. Oh, is it true? Does it mean me? Could I be healed? Could I be saved? Could I be filled with the Holy Spirit? Get beyond that. Just keep struggling, struggling, struggling until you break through and the Holy Ghost comes upon you. I'm telling you, you're beyond it then. And there's 50 miles of elbow room. The Bible said we do not see all things, but we do see Jesus. That's who I want to see. I want to see Him. How do I see Him? In the fulfilling of His promises. He promised that whosoever will may come and drink from the waters of life freely. If you're thirsty, come. He that heareth say, come. All that's willing to come. Any, anybody, whosoever. I'd rather he had said whosoever than to said William Branham. There might be more William Branhams. But when he said whosoever, I know he meant me. And that gives me a chance. Whosoever may come and drink of the waters of life. God coming in. You're dying. The doctors just give you up. Maybe the, the world has given you up. Maybe the church has given you up. But Jesus has never given you up. Whosoever will deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Deny what you're thinking. Deny your mental conception. Just believe what God's word says is truth and march on with it. Keep moving. Get sicker. Just keep moving. Just keep going. After a while, you'll break through the barriers. Then you'll be free. Then you can see him. Then he'll reveal himself to you. Then that son of God who made the promise will be real to you. Do you believe it? Let us bow our heads just a moment now for prayer. Blessed Lord. Oh, how we love to talk of you, Lord. Knowing that this group that we speak to tonight... Some day yonder beyond the blue, we'll meet them again. And we'll enjoy the blessings of God when we strike that city whose builder and maker is God. There will not be any ambulances in that city. There will not be any graveyards just outside the city. There will never be a funeral preached in that city. There will never be a sin in that city. For sin cannot enter that place. There will be no sickness in that city. They will need no physicians or medicine in that city. But we will live in His likeness, made in His image, fall conformed to His glory, and be with Him forever. Oh God, how can men and women turn such down? We pray, Lord, that they'll look tonight and turn away from their natural thinking and let the Holy Spirit come into their hearts and give them a new look that they might look at the things that's unseen. We see tonight the end time. I see a bomb yonder. I see the heavens on fire and the earth burning with the heat. I see people running into the street church screaming and crying, but it's too late. Just as Noah preached and believed. It'll be too late then, Lord. Oh, God, I'm so glad that we can see beyond that. Jesus coming up on his white throne. With ten thousands times ten thousands of his saints. Saying, enter into the blessings of the Lord. It's been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. So glad, Lord, that we can point people that way. May they forsake their sins tonight and follow after Thee. While we have our heads bowed and every heart praying, how many in this audience tonight would say, Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm looking too much to the things of the world. Maybe you're not enthroned on my heart like you should be. I want you, Lord. Would you raise up your hand to him silently? God bless you. That's good. Be real honest. You say, Brother Bram, can I rest assured that you're telling the truth? Well, if you can't believe me, believe the word. The Lord is here and he's calling 
Jesus is tenderly calling to you now. While you've got a chance like Eve did, like Adam did, to make a choice. Now, you're a free moral agent. You can make your choice. Where will you spend eternity except the man be born again? He's lost. Are you born again? If you're not, raise up your hand and say, pray for me. Brother Branham, right now, desire your prayers. That's right. All over the floor here, the bottom floors, the balconies. That's good. Raise up your hand. Be honest. Just be as least honest, friends. Before the week's over, or this next week, I'm going to preach much on these things. Of the dullness of... How that the world has blowed its poison breath into the face of the people has got them deceived. They think that they're Christians, many, when they're not. Jesus spoke of the disappointments there. Don't take any chance, friend. You haven't got another chance. This is all of it. Maybe just a lifting of your hand towards God tonight might mean the difference. Will you do it before we pray? Any others that hasn't raised, God bless you. Way back in the back, we see you. Through the balcony up there, don't think you're too far away. You're not. He knows right where you are. We're looking at things unseen. You say, well, what would I do now if I become a born-again Christian? What would my boss say? Think of what your Lord will say if you don't. Who's the greatest? Your boss, you may bury him next week. He may be gone but this time, but your Jesus will be forever. And to think that if you be in hell, tormented with demons, wooing evil spirits around you, haunting you forever, separated from God without hope. What about then? And you may be there before the sun rises in the morning. You better be ready, friend. Don't make this a joke. Don't make it a television act. Remember, it's the gospel, the eternal word of God that cannot perish. Just coming up the street, and I have seen a young man picked up off the street, mashed to pieces. His car had got out of control some way and hit another car, and the blood running out of him, the ambulance picking him up, and the boy laying there, his mouth open, the blood running out of his eyes and ears. Laid a blanket across him, pulled it over his face, and shoved him in the ambulance. I stood there, I thought, oh God, did that boy ever attend my meeting? Did I persuade long enough? Did he know Jesus? It's all over now. And I'm given that opportunity now, friend. Don't think of these earthly things. Don't think of tomorrow. Tomorrow will take thought for itself. Let's think about today and now. While Jesus is close, we might not see all things, but we see Jesus. Who was made in the image of man to take away sin of man. To bring man back to reconciliation to God our Father. Is that all that wants to raise your hand for prayer just before I pray? God bless you here, sir. You here in the wheelchair. God bless you, sir. With that kind of an attitude, surely God will answer prayer for you tonight. I mean that, sir. Lord... This is coming close to the close of the service. Many hands has been raised up. Here sits a poor man sat here bound in a wheelchair. He raised his hands. That attitude, surely you'll hear. And oh Lord, there's others out through the building here, maybe with heart trouble, maybe diseased up in some way that They just can't see how they can ever get through. But we pray, God, that you'll remember, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And maybe the breaking forth of their sins and scattering them will take away their sickness. For we realize that sickness is the attributes of sin. For sin brought sickness. And Father, we pray that you'll bless this people who raise their hands, many of them tonight in the audience. And we pray that you'll save them. And may from this night henceforth, may they walk by faith, calling those things which were not as though they were. Like Abraham of old. And if we be sons and daughters of Abraham, we have his spirit. 
And we believe the promises of God. Grant it, Father, through Jesus Christ's name, I pray for them, presenting them to Thee. Amen. Just remain in your seats just a moment. I've taken time. Last night and tonight, I went beyond my boundaries. When I come, I was only supposed to pray for sick Friday or Saturday. It wasn't Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Or Monday and Tuesday was to be preaching service. And Wednesday was prayer service. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday again was to be um, preaching service. And then healing service on Sunday. I think that's the way it went. But seeing the need, the need to represent something. I've had practically every night praying for the sick. Look, how many here for their first time is ever one of my meetings? Raise your hands. Bring her half the audience. They have never been in the meetings. How many here that's sick and needs prayer for their bodies? Won't you raise your hand? Just look everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, dear precious brother. Sister, please listen to what I've just said. Don't look at your disease. You can never get well. Don't look to your affliction. Look to Jesus. He's the one. You say, Brother Branham, if I could rest assured that he was here. If I knew that he was here, I'd be willing to accept him in every power. Would you do that? Raise your hands. If you was positive that he was here, you could accept him. Just raise your hands. All say it out. Positive he's here. Well, what would he do if he was here? Now, if you that's sick, now I'm going to wait, call for the altar call just a minute. But that you might be sure the Bible said, and I've just quoted out of, uh, I believe it's uh, the book of Hebrews, we, uh, second chapter, the ninth verse. We see Jesus. Sirs, we would see Jesus, said those who came, those Greeks that time. What would you see if Jesus was here? He's here in the form of the Holy Ghost. And he's working in his church. When Jesus was here on earth in a body of flesh, that body of flesh has been lifted up and sets at the right hand of God Almighty as a high priest staying there making intercessions upon our confession. Do you believe that? That's what the Hebrews 3 says. That's what it is. But he sent back his Holy Spirit to anoint his church and set in this church gifts to represent him to the peoples. Do you believe that? And his ministry is to be carried on. Then I confess tonight that the last sign to every generation has been the revelation of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, making himself known to the people by the same signs that he did when he was here on earth. This is for newcomers. How did Jesus make himself known? When first John, the St. John, the first chapter, Peter was brought to him and he knew him. And he called his name and never seen him as a fisherman. And he told him his name was Simon. And his father's name was Jonas. Peter believed it. That he was the Messiah because Peter knew that when Messiah was coming, he was to be the God prophet. How many believes that say amen? amen? Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. They know he was to be a God prophet. And when Philip got converted upon seeing Jesus do this to Simon Peter. And he went and found Nathanael under a tree praying and brought him back to Jesus. And Jesus knew who he was and told him where he was and what he had been doing before he came to the meeting. And what did Nathanael say? Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Is that what he said? I, see, he came to his own. The Jews was looking for him. All right. That sealed the Jews. A lot of them said he's Beelzebub, a fortune teller. Where are they at tonight? That's up to them. Jesus said it was unpardonable. Calling the Spirit of God an unclean spirit. Not discernment enough. Not thrown in a heart enough but God to know the difference between a good spirit and a wrong spirit. Now, then the first thing come. Then the, the Samaritans was looking for him. He could not pass them by. They were looking for a Messiah to come. How many believe that they were looking for the Messiah? Say amen. But we Gentiles wasn't, was we? No, we wasn't looking for no Messiah. We were heathens at that time. Carried away with idols. But the Samaritans was looking. So they come. They wanted to see 
He's, he must show them the Messiah sign. He showed Abraham the Messiah sign when he was in human flesh, standing, talking to him, and told Sarah, told Abraham, said, why did Sarah laugh when the Bible said he had his back turned to the tent where she was at? Is that right? That was just a few hours before the fire fell and consumed Sodom. See the fire coming now? See it hanging on her? All these assets and things outside the earth, and them trying to probe into the moon and things, set that thing afire one of these days, and what? There'll be no escape. Surely, woman, will you? everything, the heavens will be on fire. And out around the volcanic assets and things is hanging around the rims of this earth and so forth. It's why a scientist says it's one minute to midnight. And here we sit just waiting, saying, Well, wonder what you're going to do, Lord. And it's right on us, friend. Now, we're not on radio tonight, and that's the reason I'm trying to make this just as urgent to you as I can. Notice. Then he went by Samaria, and he found a woman. And so he said to her, Go get me a... a bring me a drink. And she said, It's not customary. We have segregation. And so he talked to her a few moments, and then he said, Go get your husband. Come here. She said, I have no husband. Said, that's right. You have five. And the one that you're now living with is not your husband. Now watch what she said to you newcomers. She never said he was Beelzebub, a fortune teller, like the priest and the preacher said. But she said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. See, they were taught to know what the Messiah sign was. And she, she said, we know Messiah, when he comes, he'll tell us, but who are you? He said, I'm he that speaks to you. And she ran into the city and said, come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? Now, if that same Jesus lives tonight, his spirit is here, promised that the things that he did, we do also. Promise that in the evening time the lights would be here. All the promises of the scripture and sin signs say it's midnight, it's striking. And the Bible pointing every signpost to the coming of the Lord. And the church getting cold and formal, having a farm of godliness but denying the power thereof. All the signs that the Bible said, then here comes the Messiah sign dropping right down among us again. We don't see all things, but we can see Jesus. I pray that each one of you here in this building tonight will think of that and see if God reveals anything to you. Believe it. Take heed to it. And say, oh Lord God, I believe it with all that's in me. And I believe if you'll just speak to me. If God will speak in this audience tonight and show himself to be the Messiah. Will you accept it then? My boy hasn't given out prayer cards or Gene or Leo or any of them for two or three nights. But you pray now, Lord, that this little broke up message tonight, that I've fumbled around over here trying to find the lead to something that would break a revival. It seems like, Lord, I just can't find that spot. It seems like the people still can't get into it somehow. The word goes forth. I'm sure the Spirit is here. Lord, what is the hour that we're living? Is it the hour of numbness? Is it the hour that the church has been lulled to sleep by the things of the world? And by all kinds of things that they should not have listened to. Is that hour here, Lord? Oh, Father God, how do I know the sun will rise in the morning? I do not know, but I pray thee, Lord, that this one more time tonight that you'll break forth upon this audience. Speak yourself, Lord. My voice is insufficient. But what I have here, I surrender to you because I realize you cannot come here in a carpal body. For when you come, then the dead in Christ will rise. Then time shall be no more. But you've sent the Holy Spirit to move in and out of our bodies and to perform and to show your signs and wonders that the people might be saved by your promise 
You do not do it because you have to. You do it because it's your word being fulfilled. You promised it, Lord. And I pray that it'll be so once more tonight. And then I shall turn this audience to you. Then if we never meet again, Lord, that's between them and thee. Receive all that we have did. And bless these who have raised their hands and others that they may be saved. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want your undivided attention. Now, here's a thing that's got to be proven one way or the other. It's either right or it's either wrong. Now, as far as I know, there's not a person in this audience that I know. I don't even see one person tonight that I know in the audience. How many strangers to me raise up your hands anywhere? Just know that I don't know you. We're strangers. Raise your hand. Now, you sick people, you pray. And you believe God with all that's in you. And God will surely do something for you. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. I don't say that he will. Preaching like this, it, it kind of moves you a bit. And God is sovereign. He's almighty. He's just. He's without beginning or end. Now you say, what are you doing, Brother Branham? I'm waiting for some of you people out there to touch the high priest. I'm just as helpless as helpless can be. When Jesus is here on earth, there's a woman that touched his garment and he turned around and said, who touched me? And he looked over an audience perhaps this size and he found the woman. Told her a blood issue had stopped because that she had believed. And the Bible said that he's a high priest right now that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. I cannot heal you. If Jesus is standing right here, he could not heal you. You're already healed. When Jesus died at the cross, he said, it's finished. What? He was wounded for our transgressions with his stripes. You were healed. The work is completely done. It's your faith in the finished work. The word should be sufficient. If I didn't believe your word, you'd say, let him go. I might say the same thing about you, but not God. Not God. He, long-suffering, sends gifts and so forth. Right back in this corner, I see a man. I do not know him. I've never seen him in my life as far as I know him. But he's suffering with a scientist's condition. Got something wrong with his thumb. Mr. Cop, stand up. Jesus Christ makes you well if you believe it, sir. I've never seen the man in my life. He's a total stranger to me. I do not know the man. But Jesus Christ does know him. Isn't he wonderful? Here's a lady sitting here looking right at me, praying, saying, God, be merciful to me. She's sitting there suffering with arthritis. That's right. You were praying, oh, Jesus, let him call me. That's right. I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. You believe God knows who you are? Mrs. Hoist, you may go home now and be well, if you believe. All right, sir. Mm -hmm. The lady sitting next to you is all happy about it because she wants to be healed also of her varicose veins. That's right, lady. If it is, raise up your hand. All right? Believe with all your heart, and then you can have what you ask for. Them people, I don't know them. Raise your hands if I don't know you people. That's right. See, what is it? They're touching the high priest. They are touching 
I seen a third hand up there just a minute ago. I believe it was a woman sitting next to her. Do you have your hand up for something, sister? Do you believe that God knows what's wrong with you? it has got a brain injury, that lady sitting there. That's right. I don't know you. If that's right, shake your hand like this. But it was caused by an automobile accident. That's right, Ray. Shake your hands like this. All right, it's over. Now you can go home and be well. What happened? Here sits a man sitting right down here praying. He's got shingles. I don't know you do us, sir. We're strangers. Is that right? Raise up your hand. Will God tell me who you are? Will you believe me then? All right, Mr. Hughes, you can go home and be well. All right, sir, that's right. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. We don't see all things, but we see Jesus. Which is that old fellow here that held up his hand a while ago? He wanted to be saved. Right here in the wheelchair. You believe God knows you, brother? I don't know you. Got a prayer card? You don't? All right. You believe God can tell me what's your trouble? If he would, would you believe he wants to heal you? You're shattered for death. It's cancer in the lung. But do you believe that God will make you well? You do? Then if I was in your place, you know what I'd do? There's some lepers set at a gate one time. And they said, why set we here till we die? Let's get up and do something about it. If we sit here, we'll die. If we go in the city, they'll, they're dying in there, so we haven't got no choice. If we go down to the camp, they might spare us. You're going to die in that condition, sitting in that wheelchair. Jesus Christ is your only hope now. That's right. So why don't you rise up from there and take your chair and go home and be well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe every one of you? Then stand to your feet. I don't care what's wrong with you. Stand up on your feet and believe God. All that wants to receive Christ at this time, raise up on your feet anywhere you want to. Raise up your hands now and praise to God. Raise up your hand. Believe Him. Here comes a man up out of the wheelchair. Let's say praise the Lord. Everybody stand up regardless of your faith. Oh, Lord God, we look at the unseen. We believe now that you're Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We condemn every spirit of devil in doubt. May they walk by the unseen tonight. Grant it, Lord, through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we ask it. Praise Him with all your heart. Get up out of your chairs everywhere. Be well and healed in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, brother. Step out of there and go on home. Make you well. While you're standing on your feet praising God, how many wants you to raise your hands a while ago? Believe that God to hear my prayer for the salvation of your soul. Come walking down here now as we sing, I will praise Him, I will praise Him. Come on, walk right down the aisles here now. Right down to receive Jesus. Keep your hands up. Keep looking at the unseen. That little pulsation in your heart. Come moving right on down. Is He pulsating to you? I'm the Lord that raised up Christ from the grave. I'm the one that sent the Holy Ghost. I'm the one that gave the promise. Brother Branham has nothing to do in this. I have he surrendered his life to me. I'm using his spirit. I'm talking through his lips. That's me. I'm the Lord. Come down. Everyone now while we sing, come right on down. I will praise him. I will praise Him, praise the Lamb for sinner slain. Come right on, come on all, give Him glory, all ye people. Thank the Lord, there goes that man walking from his wheelchair, saved a few minutes ago, given eternal life, healed of the power of God, walking away. Praise his name. I will praise him. Come right on now. Feel that pulsation in your heart. Praise the Lamb for sinner. I give him glory, all ye people, for his blood has washed away. He stand. 
Think of it. That poor man a while ago standing there raised his hand as a sinner. A black shadow flashed over him. He was dying. And he received Christ. Then his heart began to pulsate. What happened? He began to believe when the Holy Spirit came in. For he just received him in his heart. There he is standing there now on his road to life. Got everlasting life and going to be healed physically. Brought from darkness unto light. From, from death to life. Oh, how can you turn such a Savior down? When all evidence is he's right here. Come sinner friend. Come backslider. Don't be ashamed. You'll be ashamed more up there. Come now, won't you? Come on, while they're waiting now, we're giving space and time for you to come. Come every soul now. Come praising Him. How many in here is not right with God? Back there, raise up your hand. Be that honest. You know you're not right with God. He knows your heart. Thank you, lady, for being that honest. Thank you, sir, for being that honest. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless you there. Up in the balcony. It's not right with God. Raise up your hand. Be that honest. Say, I know I'm not right. I ain't got nerve enough to come, but I know I'm not right. Raise your hands. The Lord bless you. That's good. Over in here. The Lord knows you. That's good. Come right on down. How many in here that wants the Holy Ghost now and hasn't got the Holy Ghost? You come down. Come down. This is the time to receive the Holy Ghost. Except the man be born again. He cannot even understand the kingdom of God. Think of it. Come right on down now while we sing one more time. I will praise Him. Come on, give Him praise. Hold on to it. We'll praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinner slain. Give Him glory all ye people. For His blood has washed away each day. I will praise God as long as I got breath in my right mind. Can you feel that real sacred feeling coming over the church now? How many can witness that? Amen. What is it? It's the Holy Spirit around these penitent sinners. See? It's salvation. They're moving into new life now. Oh, we are to bow our heads real reverently and sing quietly while the rest of them are coming. I will praise Him. I Praise Him, praise the Lamb for sinner. Reverently now. Love you. Because he first sang a Christian. to 
just sing it. Hi. Shut off the world now. Get your senses gone. Let the Spirit come in. Hi. That moving of the Spirit. Because He first loved me. And first just my salvation on Calvary stream. All mm. oh, the sweetness of the Spirit. I just love to bathe in this. Blessed be His name. Praise God. Praise God. Just my salvation on You're coming to the cross where Jesus paid it all. You're coming where you're invited. You're not expected to turn away, but you're invited to the cross. Remember, Jesus said, No man can come to me except my Father draws him first. God draws you up here. And all that comes to me, I'll give him eternal life and will raise him up at the last day. God's eternal spirit here giving eternal life. Mm -hmm. I love him. Oh, worship him, friends. The message is over. Let's worship him now. Because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on Just think of it, friends. Now, while sinners are being born again around the altar, let's us Christians worship in the Spirit again while we raise our hands quietly and sing to Him in the reverence of our heart. Now, come on. I love Him. I love Him. Be Now, real quietly, let the Christians reach around, shake hands with someone behind you, in front of you, and to the side while we sing it again now. Make friendship, all you Baptists and Methodists, everybody, shake hands with the Pentecostal, and Pentecostal, shake hands with them. We're all one. I love Him. That's it. I. If there's any grudges among you, settle it right now. Because He first loved me and purchased my salvation on K. 
Tchau!